We've now seen the basic structure of the while statement. It's a statement that uses a condition or a Boolean expression to control the iteration of a process. We used it to create a definite iteration, an iteration where we knew we wanted to do something a specific number of times. But the more typical use for the while statement is to perform iteration where we don't know the number of times we're going to iterate. That kind of iteration is called indefinite iteration, or sometimes it's called event-controlled iteration. The idea is that we're going to repeat a process, we're going to perform a process over and over again, as long as some condition holds. But as soon as that condition fails, as soon as the event occurs that I'm looking for, the repetition will stop. And so in order to do that, we can still use the while statement, but now we've got to be careful about how we set it up to make sure, once again, that all of the criteria for the iteration are met. So, for this particular example, let's create a, 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 an iteration that is related to asking a user for information. And what I'm going to do is think about a problem where the user has to enter the answer to a question. And that question has an answer of either yes or no. And I would like the user to enter one of those two strings. However, if the user doesn't enter yes or no, I want to keep asking them to re-enter their answer. The idea being that until they answer the question correctly, I'm going to keep asking them over and over again to type in a new string. So in order to do this, let's go ahead and write this as a, an edit program. So I'll bring up an edit window. And let's think about what we need here. We know that the bulk of the work for this program is going to be done by a while statement that is going to, in essence, be asking the question, while the user has not entered the correct data, keep asking them to enter the data. But if I think about that a little bit, it's pretty clear that before I can ask that question the first time, I've got to ask the user to give me the initial piece of data, that is, give me their first answer. So let's write a simple input statement. Answer will be the result of performing the input statement, and let's ask the user to please enter an answer, and we'll say it's got to be yes or no. In other words, we're asking the user to enter an answer that has to be a yes or a no. We're giving them that prompt. Now, hopefully the user will enter a yes or a no. But if they don't, then we're going to continue to ask them over and over again. And so now the while structure that we're going to build is going to be while the value of that answer is not equal to the string yes, and while the value of that answer is not equal to the string no, then we're going to repeat the process of asking them over and over to give it to give us a new uh, a new input. In order to do that, we'll simply use the same input statement, but now we'll say something like that was incorrect. Please enter again. In other words, because you didn't enter a yes or a no, I'm going to have you do it again and hopefully you'll get it right this time. So now, think about what we've done. We've created some statements, a very, very simple collection of statements that begin by asking the user to type in a single string and while that string is not equal to the string yes and it's also not equal to the string no, in other words, they didn't type in one of the two possibilities, we're going to ask them to enter it again. And this iteration will continue until either they type in a yes or they type in a no. If they type in a yes, answer not equal to yes will fail. False ended with anything will be false and the while loop will fail. Likewise, if they type in a no, then answer not equal to no will fail. Anything ended with a false is false and the while loop will fail. And so 
the idea here is that when this while loop finishes, we can go on and process that answer. So perhaps we could say, thank you. And that means that they must have answered either a yes or a no. Well, let's run this program. So we'll go ahead and save it. And when we save it, we simply have to give it a name once again. So let's call this um, indefinite.py for indefinite iteration. And now we'll go ahead and run the program. And remember that when we run a program, the input shows up, the interactive input shows up in the Python shell. So here's my first prompt. Please enter an answer, either a yes or a no. Now, if I answer a yes right away, the program says thank you, and it finishes. What happened there? Well, if we go back to our program, this initial input statement received the result yes, answer is yes, and initially then the while condition fails because we received what we expected and we didn't iterate at all. In other words, because the condition failed immediately, we had no iterations in our while statement and we simply went right on and performed the print. This is one of the most important characteristics of the while statement, namely the ability for the while statement to iterate zero times. If the condition of the while statement fails the first try, the iteration will never occur. That means that we always need to think about asking the initial question and setting up the initial question before we get into the while statement. Well, let's go back and rerun the program again. So if I perform another run, please enter an answer either a yes or a no. If I type in dog, it says that was incorrect. Please enter it again. How about cat? That doesn't work either. What about house? That doesn't work either. And this could go on as many times as I want to enter incorrect data. This is the indefinite iteration part. I don't know when the user is going to enter the correct data and until they do the condition while they haven't answered a yes and they haven't answered a no, that causes the iteration to continue. If finally I type in the word no, then the program says thank you and in this case it terminates. Now of course typically we would then process that answer. The point of this simple example is to show a real indefinite iteration. Processing a piece of data not knowing when that piece of data will be what we want and repeating the process until we see what we want an indefinite number of times. The while statement is the only way to do this. The for statement will not work because the for statement would require us to know the number of times we're going to iterate. Here, all we know is that the user is in control of providing answers and until they provide the answer we want, the iteration will not stop.